You had to be ambulatory because the idea is that you would get out and be active and be moving around. But low about the 50s, they came up with Thorazine and treatment of mental health issues changed and the treatment here was more like um, about Alzheimer's and dementia and, and aging issues. So as some of the ladies got older and they couldn't bear to part with them, they converted the little dorms into the little hospital. You are welcome to go in, in spite of its yellowness. I personally don't find it very cheerful, but it's kind of interesting to look at. The amazing details on this building from 1929, incredible tiles, doorknob, the griffin on top of the light. I think she had a really good time, or the, the Prescott brothers had a great time designing this stuff. place got to be known as the Screen Actors Sanitarium. And you guys know that we had the lovely and beautiful and blue-eyed Billy Burke here. She apparently stayed here in the Willows and she liked watching herself in The Father of the Bride. So one night I had an opportunity to watch it and I couldn't figure out which person she ended up being. So I waited until the credits, found out that she was the mother of the groom, rewound to the introduction where they meet each other and she says oh yes billy was such a good little boy and i thought oh yeah how did i miss that <laughs> um, she apparently was in her 50s when she was glinda the good witch and now i understand all that really soft focus whenever they closed up on her but um lovely lovely thing she was married to flo zegfeld of the zegfeld follies and other follies girls followed as well as vaudevillians and various entertainers uh, this is the fabulous peggy fears she was the pony at the end of the line in the follies she was you know as, the, as they would crack the whip she was the last one to go down she left before her contract was up to come out to los angeles to act and direct and produce and sing and her um, Dementia took away her ability to speak. But Patricia favored her because she was very fun to dress, a tiny, lovely little thing. And she would play mu the music for her where she is singing. And Peggy was able to say, that's me. She also had a card by the side of her bed that said, love Teddy. And I got a, contacted by some young lady who always wondered who Teddy was until the day that Teddy rode up on her motorcycle from Palm Springs. The two of them had gone in together on a boatel in Fire Island and helped to create the, the little colony out there for people to be able to stay. And uh, I need a picture of Teddy because she was Jack Parr's weather girl and she was hotter than spit on a griddle. She um, wore this incredibly slinky dress and had her hair over one eye and apparently she would say, tonight's weather will be sultry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> 
Babe Egan and her Hollywood redheads. She was playing piano for the silence when they were filming. She then has her own little uh, swing band of women that she travels around with. This is the fabulous Marion Rose, and many of her items got left behind and upstairs. Photos of her traveling the world, dancing with her husband, the other half of the Stadler and Rose duo. This picture is taken from the King of Jazz with the Paul Whiteman Orchestra and Bing Crosby. This snippet is from an award-winning documentary that Glendale did when they purchased the Rock Haven property. If you haven't had a chance to see it on YouTube, look up Rock Haven Jewel of Glendale history or whatever, and you will see this little bit. But really what I recommend is that you look up Ragamuffin Romeo because you will see the entire routine where her husband goes over and pulls her out of a pile of rags like she's a rag doll <laughs> and he bends her backwards and he bends her forwards and he lifts her up and he brings her down and he takes her back and forth and I'm thinking good god this woman's gonna get whiplash she's the one who choreographed it the woman of the duo did the choreography and as we were saying earlier Clark Gable's first wife Clark Gable's fourth wife's sister, so I guess he knew, hey, we need, if you need a place to put her, I know where it can go. <laughs> uh, Spike Jones apparently had quite a presence here in the Crescenta Valley, and his mom stayed here. And this is our most infamous resident. This is Marilyn Monroe's mom, Gladys Ely. She suffered from what we now believe is a bipolar paranoid, par paranoidism, and um, always needed to escape. So. What you guys are going to do is you're going to make sure that you pay attention to these details. This wrought iron was done by the Huntington Iron Works of La Cañada, local guys. So you'll see this beautiful stairway that had to get um, railed off, but they didn't take it out, so it's still there, and the, and the work is incredible. you got the transom windows, you got tiles and built-ins, and amazing things to see as you pass through the common room and meet. Do you know if Kate is going to do the story, or are you going to do the story? Where did I lose Pedro? Okay, so I guess Kate is going to meet you in that in the back room and tell you a couple of our stories about Miss Gladys. Well, unfortunately, the building that Billy Burke lived in, which is this one right here, she lived in the downstairs. We're not able to go into by city rule. Um, the lady that works here said that there's furs and there's personal photos and there's letters and all kinds of things up there. But she said what happened was they were training canines out here at one point um, to kind of like surveil the property. And one of the guys who was in charge of the canines was hanging out up in that room up there spitting sunflower seeds and everything. So they kind of complained about it and said, hey, we like that they're here, but not that they're destroying the historical property. And the city basically said, okay, they can't go in there anymore, but neither can you guys. But we can go in here, so let's go. Let's take a walk around this. Thank you. And I think we're gonna hear a ghost story at the end of this one. Now this is the rail that she was saying that they had to kind of like detour. So it actually goes down here. Check that out. Yeah, so it's just, matter of fact, there's still a doctor down here. Oh yeah, okay. Plum Hardware. Um, is that building still there, or is no, that no, no, no. Oh, wow. That's where the, where the That very well could have been painted here during an arts and crafts class. Right. Then it was Bailey's Market, then Tom Honey was not there. And then the Bailey's Market building is still there. No. No? Really? Some clothes. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, that's cute. I can see somebody wearing that. Do you see that? It kind of buttons up right there in that center Sarah Sarah Grenadier is the designer on that so these you can probably tell we're all shared bathrooms but look at the detail wow that is nice Oh wow. It's a keychain. Leviticus. The bathrooms are so cool in this 
morning prayer. Oh, look at that. Old photos. And some clothes, some leftover dresses. And a garment bag. M. Miller. Is that what that says? M. Miller. Irene H. <laughs> Hot air balloon. Oh wow, look at this bathroom. Little shower head. Soap dispenser. And this is just kind of like leftover furniture it looks like in here. Yeah, that's a leftover bedding. This must have been the kind of a sitting activity room, I would guess. And this is kind of cool. Look at this. Comedy radio. And they have a little slide projector down here. I can only imagine what these slides have on them. <laughs> Is that a sewing machine? Yeah, it's a sewing machine. I'm gonna be, I don't know Better group in here. So as you all know, Gladys Ely was Marilyn Monroe's mom. She has she stayed here for many years. She was known as quite an escape artist. She has escaped three times that we know of. One time she got married. Classic. <laughs> right? <laughs> One of the other times, she escaped out one of the windows. <laughs> How many of you think it was that window? It was definitely the closet window. It was the closet window. <laughs> she took a bed sheet, <laughs> tied it together, and climbed out that window and just... <laughs> she was gone. <laughs> well, that's she great. Her. Classic. <laughs> she was also known to a petite, interesting-looking woman. Once Marilyn Monroe passed away, None of the money was coming in to keep her here, but instead of kicking her to the curb, they kept her even there. And so she stayed here for a little bit longer until Marilyn Monroe's half-sister came and got her and took her away. And once she was away, she lived the rest of her days in a normal care facility. Because when she was gone away from the lights of Hollywood and where her daughter was, she seemed to have gotten a lot better. And no, what did Marilyn Monroe's half sister do for a living? I've, I've, no. never, I've been trying to figure that out. I know she had a half brother too. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is going back in time. All these bathrooms are really neat. Extremely colorful tiling, wallpaper, it's pretty amazing. All different colors. So this facility does actually have historical status because even though there's a lot of it that's kind of falling apart that you can tell, they're able to 
basically get everything restored with the original stuff or they're able to keep just enough original that it keeps its historical status. So now that everybody has left here, I want to show you Marilyn Monroe's mother's room. It's completely empty. And like the lady said, she was an escape artist and uh, actually escaped through the closet window, which is that one right there. Oh, and it locks from the inside for some yeah, reason. Look at that. Interesting. And there's the building that we were looking at earlier where Billy Burke lived. Uh, statuary and rugs and various things. You can see all the places that they would have been. Some places you can even see the rings where the pots used to be. And I walked by this archway once and I wondered who used to be in there. And then I found this picture of her. Now a lot of the items got removed from being outside to protect them from theft or vandalism tucked away in the garages that are here. But this one happened to be get tucked away. All right, well, it sounds like we're going into like a cafeteria area that's a gift shop, and that's where the tour pretty much ends. <laughs> What's on the right? Is this a pantry? The fridge. Oh, this fridge. This is the refrigerator, wow. Oh, there's Glenda the Good Witch. There's Billy Burke herself. Neat. Oh, nice. It's a pretty big kitchen. Bread's it's a meat slicer. Oh, look at that old hospital style. Drinkware. Oh, barbecue. Oops. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so they all dined together. There was meal times. Oh, look, they have little rock haven bags and. Rock Haven shirts. Nice. Oh, Chef! I remember him. He used to make these cinnamon rolls. To own her own um, department store, like we had the parties where uh, everything, something was celebrated every month, like. Uh, <laughs> she had a, a German chocolate cake on, uh, for Oktoberfest, and she would have French cut green beans for Bastille Day, which she was so proud that French cut green beans is what she chose. And uh, for uh, Polynesian, uh, no, for um, Hawaii Induction Day, they would have Polynesian dancers, and of course, um, Mother's Day teas, and there was apparently Father's Day teas, and every month they celebrated whoever birthday it was that month. And frequently they would bring in the Del Rubio triplets. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and on one of my first tours, a nurse that was here looked at this picture and she nodded. And I said, oh, you remember the Del Rubio triplets? She said, you don't forget the Del Rubio no. triplets. You remember with children. So. <laughs> Playhouse. Yes, that's the one that I knew them from, yeah. What's that? Pee Wee's Playhouse. Oh, look at those tiles. Well, I'm going to buy some postcards for my Patreons and help support this, uh, this amazing tour that I got to do. And some of you Patreons are going to get some of these postcards at the end of the month. All right, I got a stack of different postcards here. A couple of buttons. So some of you people are going to be getting some stuff in the mail from me. Well, we are, I think we are pretty much done here. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. This was a great experience. Notice they never mentioned Francis Farmer in any of the talks while we were touring around here. So I actually went up to the lady who gave the tour and I said, 
I had read that Frances Farmer was actually here after the whole Knickerbocker thing. She said, that's a rumor, but she said she actually wasn't. She said, if, if you go a block up to where the Ralphs is, close by here, there was a place called Kimball. And she said Kimball is actually where Frances Farmer was. And Frances Farmer, the reason that she, her mother wanted her moved was actually because at that facility, Frances had escaped a couple of times and they would find her out wandering the streets. So I hope that kind of clarifies what I misunderstood or what's online that's incorrect. And whoever gets my sunglasses at the end of these hundred days, there they are on the Rock Haven entrance gate. All right, gang, we're out of here. Let's go. Well, gang, that's it. We're done here at Rock Haven Sanitarium. I hope you guys enjoyed taking this tour and uh, kind of seeing what the insides are like. Uh, like I said, they do one actual tour here a month if they have a group, but they also do one day of cleaning. So if you'd like to come donate your time, see the grounds and help clean, you can do that anytime. Go on Facebook, join their group with, um, I believe it's under Rock Haven or Friends of Rock Haven. And that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tour. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing the history. This is, like she said, this is the only sanitarium of its kind still intact. So let's enjoy it. Days with Jordan the Lion saying goodbye and have a great night. And happy belated birthday to my newest Patreon, Josie Smith. Goodbye.